DNA replication is the copying of DNA for cell division or reproduction. Before we dive into the detailed mechanism about DNA replication, we first need to understand the overall scheme and some basic properties. In my previous video titled History of DNA, I covered the Meselson and Stoll experiment which showed that DNA replication is semi-conservative, meaning that the two parental strands separate and each function as a template for synthesis of a new complementary strand. DNA replication is also bidirectional. It begins at a special site called the origin of replication, which forms a replication bubble with two Y-shaped regions called the replication forks, where the parental strands of DNA are being unwound. Replication proceeds bidirectionally until forks meet on the other side, resulting in two daughter DNA molecules. Bacterial chromosome is circular and only has a single origin of replication whereas eukaryotic chromosome is linear and much larger, therefore could have up to thousands origin of replication. Lastly, DNA replication is coordinated and semi-discontinuous. DNA replication is carried out by DNA polymerases, which only adds nucleotides to the free 3' end of a growing strand. Therefore, DNA synthesis can only proceed in the 5' to 3' direction. The two parental strands at the replication fork are synthesized coordinately at similar rates. However, they are antiparallel, running in opposite directions. Along one strand called the leading strand, which unwinds from 3' to 5' towards the replication fork, DNA polymerase synthesizes DNA continuously from 5' to 3' end. Along the other strand called the lagging strand, DNA polymerase must work in the direction away from the replication fork this continuously synthesizing a series of segments called the Okazaki fragments. Because the leading strand is synthesized continuously while the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously, overall DNA replication is said to be semi-discontinuous. DNA replication involves three main steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. I'll be covering both bacterial and eukaryotic reposomes or DNA replication systems. The bacterial origin of replication is known as ORI-C, which consists two special sequences, the A box and the DUE or DNA unwinding element. During initiation, the DNA A protein recognizes ORI-C by binding to the A box. The strain caused by this binding triggers the denaturation of the DNA unwinding element region, which is rich in adenine and thymine base pairs. Recall that AT base pairs only have two hydrogen bonds and are easier to unwind than GC base pairs. Next, the DNA-C protein loads the DNA-B protein onto the separated DNA strands in the denature region. DNA-B serves as the helicase which unwinds DNA at the replication forks, which is the key event of replication initiation. Molecules of single-strand binding protein, abbreviated as SSB, stabilize the separated strands. DNA gyrus or DNA topoisomerase to release the torsional string induced ahead of replication fork by the unwinding reaction. Several other proteins, HU, FIS, and IHF, also binds DNA to stimulate initiation. The E's origin of replication is known as the ARS, which stands for Autonomously Replicating Sequences, also known as the replicators. The ARS is recognized by ORC, or Origin Recognition Complex. Two proteins CDC6 and CDT1 then loads mini chromosome maintenance proteins MCM227 onto DNA strands. The MCM227 proteins are the helicase in eukaryotic replication. RPA or replication protein A functions as single-strand binding proteins to stabilize separated strands. DNA topoisomerase 1 helps release the torsional string induced ahead of replication fork. Bacterial initiation and replication is regulated by DNA methylation. Immediately after replication, the ORIC is hemimethylated which means that the parent strands are methylated while the new strands are not. This methylation pattern is also important for mismatch repair recognition, which will be talked about in a future video. The protein SEC-A or sequestration factor A will temporarily inhibit DNA A binding and thus prevent over-replication. During elongation, DNA polymerases synthesize DNA complementary to each of the parent strands. DNA polymerases require an RNA primer to initiate synthesis. In bacteria, the protein DNA-G associates with DNA helicase and synthesizes RNA primers. 
The primary DNA polymerase in bacterial replication is DNA polymerase 3, which contains 13 subunits. The core polymerase contains the alpha subunit, which carries out the polymerase actively that adds nucleotides to the RNA primer. The epsilon subunit contains 3' 2' 5' exonucleus activity, which functions as a proofreading mechanism that removes an incorrect base pair. The beta subunit serves as a clamp to keep the polymerase attached to the DNA strand, improving its processivity. Additional subunits tau, gamma, delta, delta prime make up a complex that help loads beta subunit onto the DNA strand, serving as the clamp loader. The leading strand is synthesized continuously and only requires one primer, but the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously and requires multiple primers for each Okazaki fragment. Two DNA polymerase 3 molecules work together in a complex with helicase and other proteins to coordinate the synthesis of leading and lagging strand. This is known as the trombone model, in which the lagging strand DNA loops through the complex resembling the slide of a trombone. In the lagging strand, an additional polymerase known as DNA polymerase 1 functions to replace the RNA primer with DNA. DNA polymerase 1 contains the 5' through 3' exonucleus activity, which functions in removing the RNA primers from Okazaki fragments. The remaining fragment of DNA polymerase 1 is known as the clinal fragment, which contains 5' through 3' polymerase activity that replaces the RNA removed by the exonucleus with DNA, and 3' to 5' exonucleus activity for proofreading. After DNA polymerase 1 replaces RNA primer with DNA, there are still gaps known as NICs remain in the phosphodiester backbone. Bacterial reposomes use DNA ligase to seal these NICs. For eukaryotes, the RNA primer is synthesized by DNA polymerase alpha, which contains a primus subunit but lacks 3' to 5' exonucleus proofreading activity. Therefore, it dissociates after extending a short fragment of the primer. The primary polymerases in eukaryotic replication are DNA polymerase epsilon, which mainly synthesizes the leading strand, and DNA polymerase delta, which mainly synthesizes the lagging strand. Both polymerases contain 3' to 5' exonucleus proofreading activity and are associated with PCNA, which stands for proliferating cell nuclear antigen, which is analogous to the beta clamp subunit of DNA polymerase 3, keeping the polymerase attached to DNA. RFC or replication factor C serves as the clamp loader in eukaryotic replication. The RNA primers are removed by RNase H and replaced with DNA by DNA polymerase alpha. In eukaryotes, small amount of DNA segment upstream of RNA primer is also displaced, creating a flap structure which is removed by flap endonucleus 1 or FEM1. The NICs are sealed by DNA-dependent DNA ligase. Eventually, the two replication forks of the circular bacterial chromosome meet at a terminus region containing the TER sequences, which functions as binding sites for the protein TUS, which stands for Terminus Utilization Substance. The TUS-TER complex arrests a replication fork from only one direction and prevents over-replication. Replication creates completed chromosome joined as interlinked circles, known as catenanes, which can only be resolved by topoisomerase 4 transiently breaking both DNA strands and creating two separated chromosomes. During each round of DNA replication, the RNA primer at the 5' end cannot be replaced by DNA polymerase because it lacks a 3' OH, leaving a 3' overhang after each round of replication, causing progressive shortening of daughter molecules. To cope with this problem, the enzyme telomerase catalyzes the lengthening of a repeating sequence known as the telomeres. Telomerase is a reverse transcriptase that contains both RNA and protein. The RNA contains Ca-rich repeat that acts as an internal template for the synthesis of Tg-rich strand of the telomere. Repositions of the template RNA allow addition of more Tg residues. After extension of Tg strand by telomerase, DNA polymerase synthesizes complementary Ca strand. DNA replication is very accurate. Three factors contribute to replication fidelity. The first mechanism is known as base selection, in which the active sites of DNA polymerases select base pair with the right geometry. Incorrect bases can be rejected before phosphodiester bond is formed. The second mechanism involves the 3' to 5' exonuclease activity in the primary DNA polymerases, which double-checks each nucleotide after it is added and removes mispaired nucleotides.
Finally, an additional accuracy is provided by a separate enzyme system that repairs mismatched base pairs remaining after replication, in the process known as the mismatch repair mechanism.